Hello there, welcome to the OK Football Show Opposition Preview with me, Philip Macbeth Seath. This week, I'm going to be hosting Jimmy from the Blades Ramble as Luton prepared for the journey up to Bramall Lane against Sheffield United. Sheffield United are unbeaten at the moment. They have got five wins, three draws and a minus two forfeit uh, that they had at the start of the season. But they are unbeaten. They've only conceded three goals. They've scored eight. They've assembled quite an impressive squad. Uh, they went on a bit of a madness at the end of the transfer window and managed to get the signatures of quite a few sought-after players. So it's going to be a hard one. Last time we went to Bramall Lane, Luton got over the line with a 3-2 win, courtesy of a double deflection off the Carlton Morris assist. And what hatters wouldn't give for a 3-2 win away on the road this weekend. Unfortunately, at the moment, Luton Town's situation is pretty bleak. Uh, we find ourselves just above the relegation zone, having been just above the relegation zone this time last year. But with that time, we were in the Premier League. It's difficult at the moment because I want to be positive. I desperately want to be positive and I don't want the fan base to be divided by any opinions because it's hard and we do need to club together. And I understand that on social media, it's been a real difficult place to have opinions and not get battered for them. But the reality of it is that we've all got opinions. We all love the club. We all love the club. It's what gives us joy throughout the course of the week. But at the moment, things are really, really tough. Really, really tough. And for those of you that went down to Plymouth, like myself, that was a hard watch. It was a hard journey and a hard watch. And then we went 2-0 up against Oxford and everything's looking fine and dandy. We rode our luck a little bit. Thank you, Ted and Mengi, for getting a couple of those shots off the line. Thomas Kaminsky was wonderful. Um, I thought they had a top, top performance. And we took our chances. We had a Jordan Clark effort that was missed before he then went and scored. And Jacob Brown managed to get himself an assist for Tom Krause to get his opening goal for Luton Town. Other than that, though, it was pretty abject. And we are so predictable. We really are so predictable. And as soon as they got their first goal, it just felt like the writing was on the wall for a 3-2 loss. Fortunately, we got ourselves a point. Um, so take the positives from that. But uh, the reality of it was is that all the passion that we want to see, it seems to just not be there. It's not there for all to see. It might be bubbling underneath the surface, and I really hope it is. But the reality of it is, is that things are really, really difficult. We're going through a properly, properly testing time. So an away day at Sheffield United is really not what we want. However, it is a chance for us to get some confidence before we host our arch rivals Watford to Kenilworth Road after the next international break. But that's a little bit about Luton. Let's hear what Jimmy had to say from the Blades Ramble about our game at three o'clock this Saturday. So everyone, as promised, I've got Jimmy here from Blades Ramble. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Jimmy. I'm really uh, happy to have you on this evening. Uh, let's Not get the problem. admin out of the way straight off the bat. Jimmy, um, let's see if we can get you some more followers. Fingers crossed for your socials. Would you like to just share uh, how they can follow you and on what various different platforms? That's very kind. Yes, thank you. Um, the main platform you'll find us on is YouTube. We are the Blades Ramble, a Sheffield United fan channel. Uh, mainly focused on the Blades, if I'm honest. It's not. We do touch on other teams as and when we're playing them, but it's it's main focus is uh, hopefully some people can get some more enjoyment out of it. But we have got other pages, Facebook, uh, TikTok, which I haven't a clue what I'm doing on there, and <laughs> Instagram. I don't really post much to these other platforms, if I'm honest. It all sort of feeds into the YouTube, but yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? So big fan of the uh, YouTube fan football fan space so i like watching other channels like yourselves i know you start covering the whole championship now aren't you so yes so i'm enjoying yeah. that content as well yeah it's difficult so. that one because uh obviously we, we we record on a sunday morning so sometimes we're sort of playing off of the the highlights a little bit and i know that some uh some blades yeah. did not like me a few weeks ago <laughs> when uh i i said i said about how efficient you were um against hull and that they had a lot of possession and that you uh, you scored two very, very good goals. Um, and I called you effective, and I said that you're not doing anything particularly special, but you're effective in one, and I got absolute dog's abuse. So uh, no. I guess I'm sorry. Um... Can be a bit sensitive <laughs> at times. No, sorry about that. We can be a bit sensitive. Oh. 
Oh, ima- no. imagine being unbeaten and being that sensitive. <laughs> so, I know. But, but never mind. I know. Never mind. I know. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, imagine, let's, imagine let's talk to about that as well. Yeah, to your own fan base. Yeah, I agree. I agree, I know, mate. I know. But uh, anyway, let's let's talk about <laughs> your guys. Let's talk about Sheffield United. And um, last night you uh, you got a one nil victory um, at home to Swansea um, with a courtesy of an own goal. Um, and like I said, you're unbeaten. You've won five. You've drawn three. Um, you had the two point points deduction. And if it wasn't for that, you'd be sitting sitting joint top. So um, it's a happy time to be a Blades fan, surely. Brilliant, brilliant start. Cannot say any other. Really pleased with the start that we've made. Huge changes in the summer. Um, not just a formation change, but we lost almost 20 players in the summer and, and brought in what I would probably say uh, is quality over quantity. So while we've got a very strong starting eleven at this level, which we're, we're all really pleased with, there's not much depth underneath it, really. And that's been our concern. But so far, in terms of blending a new team together, I think there's been like eight or nine new faces as opposed to like that have come through the door this summer into the starting lineup. Can't ask for much more. Five get five wins, three draws. Look, it, it hasn't quite clicked yet, but if you we've got players like Gustavo Hamer, Callum O'Hare, Jez Raksaki, mm. who looks like he's starting to find his feet a little bit. Oli Arblaster who's unfortunately out with an injury. will miss this game as well. I believe um, but he's going to be some player for us this season. The defence is rock solid, five clean sheets in a row. How can anybody... Comp- Mike Cooper, if that's not the signing of the summer, I've no idea what is because we've been banging on on our channel for, to, to get him for so long and it was just like Christmas Day when he came because to get him for some around £2 million, I think it will rise, obviously, with any success that we get, but he's been an absolute... He's got a bit of an aura about him, a bit of a sort yeah. of... Um, we had Dean Henderson on loan a couple of years ago and he had a bit of a presence at the back, which gives you defence, that confidence. I, I suppose you may have something similar with Kaminsky. I don't know the um, the vibe that you've got with Kaminsky. He always seems to do really well for you. So I can only assume that your defenders feed off it when they've got a strong goalkeeper behind them. It gives them a little bit more confidence to play themselves. So it's been I can't complain, to be honest. It's not quite clicked, as I say. And for the creative players that we've got, We've probably not scored enough goals. Last night against Swansea, we're very poor opening 45. And then the second half, uh, they they obviously knocked one in just before half time and, and made it 1 0 through an own goal. But second half, it were all blades and we peppered them and mm. we hit bar and we hit the post. And it could have been three or four, but that's been the case a few times this season. And we're not quite putting our chances away. I'm just hoping it'll click at some point. Maybe even on Saturday, who knows? Fingers crossed. I, I, do, you know, do you know what, Jimmy? I, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, it's uh, it's been it's been pretty bleak for us. Um, I mean, we, we obviously came down together, but uh, when you compare the journeys of us this season so far, um, it's chalk and cheese. I mean, you mentioned about Kaminsky there. Kaminsky had a moment of madness against Pompey, but other than that, he's been a shining light. But the problem is, he's been a shining light. Like he should. <laughs> We, I say he shouldn't be. Yeah, like you, you don't want him to be. You want the the defense no, to be far, far better in front of him. And and you said about the the defense having the confidence with him in behind us. The problem is they've got so much confidence in him. They're putting him to work because they're not doing anything in front of him. And I'm really worried about the weekend. So uh, have you, I, I mean, and, have you? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but have you been surprised right. by your start? Because yeah. I, I thought you'd do yeah. better than you have. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, what what's happening at the moment for us is is something that hasn't happened in many, many, many years. We've been very, very fortunate um, in in the grand scheme of things. To whilst we were way down, we were in the fifth fifth tier. We've yeah. we've ultimately been successful for ten, twelve years. And going going down, we, everyone sort of expected it, and everyone was like, "Yeah, okay, fair enough. We gave it a good crack," but. We feel like the championship is is sort of our level. I feel like that's where we where we should be, and and we should not be struggling to the extent that we are. And for the first mm-hmm. time since Rob Edwards took over, there's there's serious rumblings about what he's doing, what formation he's got, and you know what it's like. Football yeah. fans are all experts in their own right. Um, and yeah, and I, are, I've yeah. questioned him. I've I've questioned him. I think that sometimes his his changes are, are, are difficult, and and it it kind of brings me to my worries about the weekend because I feel like his stubbornness is is like Vincent Company last year with with Burnley. It's I'm gonna play this way. I don't care what everyone says. This is how we're gonna play. So you'll know exactly how we're set up. Chris Wider will know exactly how to beat us. 
just like he knew when he came to Kenilworth Road last season and you turn, turned us over and tickled our tummies a little bit. But I look at the players that you've got. I mean, you think that an area of strength would be um, Carlton Morris and Adebayo, but you, you've got Suter at the back, who's an absolute monster. So I, um, yeah. I'm a little bit worried um, about how toothless we are. Um, and, and, I, and I feel like we, we could be in for a, a, a real difficult weekend um and 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 like I say I think I think from a from a Sheffield United point of view you must be sort of rubbing your hands thinking this is a great time to play us because we're, we're so bereft of confidence it's unbelievable yeah I, it's, it's one of the fixtures that we looked for obviously we came down together and you're thinking oh well these are going to be our big games yourselves there'll be Burnley and Leeds and I assume that you'll we'll have been the three that you guys look for as well really yeah and yep. You're right. It's the right time to play, yeah. And and that doesn't guarantee us a victory by any means, but I think it helps that we're at home. It helps that we're at, we're on a good run of form in terms of results if performances haven't quite matched that or conver- performances haven't turned it into goals, which it should have done. Yeah, I'm um, I'm excited and I'm hoping I'm hoping that it just all starts to click. We had um, we were lucky enough to have Ollie come on to our warm up for the Luton so our preview, if you like. Yes, and he was saying yeah. the same. He was saying it's it's too predictable under Edwards at the minute and he's too stubborn mm. to change it and that might come back to bite him if he's not... Ca- he certainly weren't calling for him out. Um, it were expected that you'd go down and I think your recruitment's been fantastic going up. We, we're a, we're big fans of Jay Sausage, who've, who's obviously on your staff now as part of the recruitment team. Big yeah. blade. He'll, he'll, be, he'll come home one day. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, it's, um, but he's a very talented, data-driven analyst. So we know that you get in some great... Well, you're known to get in some good players at good money. Yeah. yeah. I think, obviously, you lost Barkley, Townsend, Ogbeni, but I didn't think it would affect you this much. So it's yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting. It's it's going to be typical blades that you'll click at Bramall Lane and and it'll yeah. all come together and it'll be it'll be nil oh. four or something like that and it'll just be oh. a disaster for oh. us. But I'm I'm thinking we'll it'll be very much that the other way around, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think the the thing that the the thing that frightens me and the thing that um, I've found very frustrating so far this year from our point of view is that uh, our centre, our centre midfield is is. It's very lightweight. I think uh, I don't know whether you you came up to to Kenilworth Road or if you managed to see the game last year when um, when you beat us. Even yes. though you beat us and you were very very good, um, yeah. Th- Ross Barkley was sort of sort of um, taunting Hamer. I remember him sort of saying he's got a bit of a belly and stuff like that. And he and he and he on a one on one, Barkley could run rings around him. But the reality of it is that Hamer in the Championship is a completely different animal and. I'm absolutely cacking it about the fact that he's going to put on a bit of a masterclass and run the run the show on Saturday. I mean, how has he been in comparison to last year in the championship? Have you have you noticed that he's considerably above this level? He um, in the, the second half of last season, he, he really started to become comfortable within the team and he started to stand out amongst a really poor side, to be honest. And he was our only. I think he was the only one to get up to ten goal and assist involvements in our side. And coming down, we knew we had a bit of a diamond in this league, a bit of a cheat code, if yeah. you like. And it was more yeah. or less, can we hold on to him? We were lucky that we sold Willa Sula, who was out of our academy. Well, we bought him, he came, originally came from Copenhagen, but we bought him young, took him through our academy and sold him for 10 million, rising to 15 from Newcastle. And that yeah. filled a big gap, which meant we could hold on to some of our players. We sold like Austin Trusty, who didn't quite work out, made a profit on him. We sold Benny Traore, made a profit on him. Or, or made our money back, more or less. And and these sort of, the brilliant business that Chris Wilder has been able to orchestrate in the summer. And I know that Ollie's not a massive Chris Wilder fan, um, <laughs> but I, I certainly am. I certainly am. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. He came on our preview and said he thinks Chris Wilder is the thing that's potentially holding us back. That, that to me, I, I just, I, I get the, um, the blanket sort of view of that. And, and it's... As a Sheffield United fan, I can tell you that there's nobody else I would want leading us than Chris Wilder. And, and Gus Hamer doesn't necessarily play in his ideal position because we've got him out on the left-hand side. Sometimes he does go a little bit missing in games, but he's, he's, he's got the most goal and assist involvements in the team. I think he's our top scorer mm-hmm. currently on three or four. He's really, he doesn't need to be involved all 90 minutes. All he needs is that yeah. 10 minutes of genius and he can he can have us 2 nil up. So he's, he's our most effective player, I would say, without yeah. a doubt. Certainly most creative player, most dangerous player. And I think if we hold on to him, 
and I'm talking through January as well, we'll yeah. have every chance of being in the mix come the end of the season. Yeah, I think I think um, when I look back at Luton's journey, I think if it wasn't for Hamer going off injured, we might have been in the Championship last year anyway. Um, he was he was pulling the strings for uh, Coventry in the second half of the playoff final. He scored the goal, and then he jumped up and he yeah. twisted his ankle on the way down. And um, in many ways, I, I thank my lucky stars that 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 happened because That's I true. think if he stayed yeah. on the pitch, our our entire destiny would have been completely different. And uh, I'll probably get wow. pelters. Like say, we, we're, these are, these are the things that happen when you do a podcast. You get pelters, but um, the reality of it <laughs> is that I think that that the outcome of that final could have been very very different if it wasn't for the fact that Hamer went off. So um, yeah, I, I I'm so very very fearful, and I very very respectful of the fact that he's an absolutely top player. So, um, so yeah, like I say, I'm hoping that he has a quiet day out on that left-hand side on, uh, on yeah, Saturday, fingers, it, fingers crossed. It, it, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm up in opposite. He, um, <laughs> he's working really well now with Harrison Burrows, who's coming from Peterborough. Uh, so yeah, he started yeah. getting... That was a good coup as well. On the bar. Really good. Yeah, it, it, yeah he was on loan. people queuing Elton up for him. Died. Yeah, and... Yeah. Some players in our team now. We've got. How did we get Callum O'Hare for free? It's like yeah. it's unbelievable business that we've done. And so if if you you can't go two men on Hamer because we've got Raksaki over the other side, and you yeah. can't put a man on O'Hare because Hamer's then free to nip in into the. So whilst we've got five clean sheets in a row, Wilder's all very adamant in coming out and saying we're not a defensive side by any means. We're a, mm-hmm. we're an attacking side that just defends very well. So. It's yeah. not quite clicked in final third for us yet, but I think it's coming. I don't necessarily think it's coming this weekend, but I think at some stage this season, someone's going to get a paste in. And uh, yeah. I just hope I'm there to see it. Oh, we're at right side of it anyway. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Like I say, I'm I'm, I'm at very, very fearful that it could be this weekend. So I'm, uh, I'm going <laughs> to... Keep my fingers very firmly crossed that we don't get um, that get that battering and and like I say that you click against us. So Jimmy, the uh, before we uh, wrap up, um, I said it to you before off air that um, we we do a predictor league um, on this podcast uh, called the Sluga Six. Um, and just for anyone yes, that's, that's listening for the first time, um, we get the opposition preview podcast to uh, predict six scores, um, and they're playing towards a donation for the Luton Town Food Bank. Uh, the rest of us that are on the podcast also make predictions and whoever wins at the end of the season will win the right to have that particular donation to a charity of their choice. So, Jimmy, if it's OK, I'm just going to jot down your your scores. We do double points for the uh, for the Luton Town fixture. So the first one I'm going to ask you is for that fixture. So it's Sheffield United versus Luton Town. What do you think the scoreline is going to be? I'll say this with all due respect, because I do I do think Luton are a, a very strong side, but we are playing you at a good time. And I think it's going to be three one Chef United. Yeah, I f- I f- absolutely fair. <laughs> absolutely fair. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, it's, it's, no, you said with uh, all due respect, as I say. Cause I, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. And you're playing towards players. charity charity donation as well. Absolutely. So you have to be sensible. You've got to go. so. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, the next <laughs> one is Derby versus QPR. One apiece. Yeah, that's been popular amongst the boys as well. Uh, Plymouth versus Blackburn Rovers. Um, one two. Yep. Uh, Swansea versus Stoke. Stoke just hammered. Um, they did, didn't Portsmouth, they? Didn't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought Swansea were all right. Um, uh, I've just gone two one. I can't do that again. We'll go two nil. Two nil Stoke. Two nil Stoke. Ash on Swansea. Um, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Stoke. Like I say they. Yeah, they, they're the banging form. They've just got a brand new manager, so fair play to them. Um, Watford versus Middlesbrough. I hope Watford, but I think it'll be probably. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, no, only for league, only for league standings. I, I'm not a fan. Um, not the way they mis- mistreated the Messiah either. So um, yeah, I'm going. I'm going one nil Middlesbrough. Yeah. Lovely. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And the last one is uh, West Brom versus Millwall. <sighs> you won't like me wanting Millwall to win that either, but it's, again, <laughs> it's for the league, <laughs> the balance. But 2-0 um, uh, West Brom. Yeah, top man. All right. Yeah, I know it's, it's difficult because sometimes I don't even want to say Watford, especially when people then start saying... Oh, no, I'm sorry. But, uh, but I get it. I get it. Um, and I didn't put Wednesday <laughs> in there 
for you. You'll you'll appreciate, appreciate that. that. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, they'll, 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 I did. Sh- I did. Tonight. I did speak to Sheffield Wednesday a couple of weeks ago, and I put the I put down Sheffield United as a as a prediction. He <laughs> predicted you to win, but he was very salty about it. Bless him. So, yeah, <laughs> so, you're probably so, right, okay. though, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he did. He got it spot on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. There you go. But, there uh, you go. Any, Anyway, Jimmy, it's been a real genuine pleasure to speak to you. I've I've really enjoyed it, and thank you so much for your yeah, insight. Yeah, me too, mate. Um, yeah, no problem. Really thank you for having me on. And, uh, not a problem. And like I say, I hope you I hope you enjoy the game, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you later on in the season.